welcome back to my channel. Today I have a yearly message for all of the Leos out in the collective. This is going to represent what 2022 has in store for you. Please note this is going to be a general reading, so it will not resonate with every single Leo out in the collective. I ask that you take with you what resonates and leave the rest behind. If you are new to my channel, welcome to Eileen Into Spirit. My name is Eileen Rouse. I'm a psychic intuitive and spiritual coach, and I provide you with guidance, wisdom, and inspiration every other week right here on this channel. Let's get into your message, Leo. All right, Leo, let's go ahead and get right into it. As you can see, cards have already been shuffled um, and drawn, and you see right here before you 12 cards. So each card represents one of the months in 2022. So let's get right into it. So Leo, for the month of January, we have the energy of the King of Pentacles. Now, I really love this. This really means that a lot of you Leos um, are feeling very abundant, very knowledgeable, um, and you feel very um, royally in your finances. I really feel that a lot of you are sort of experiencing the luxuries in life. Um, and I feel that Everything that you are currently working on or that you've got going on here is sort of turning into gold. It's almost like, so a lot of times people refer to the King of Pentacles as the Midas touch, right? Where everything sort of turns to gold. I really feel that everything that you're working on, um, you accomplish and you're very good at it. You're very successful at it. So I really feel that the month of January is going to feel very good for you. Um, you're going to feel very abundant. You're going to feel very strong. You're going to feel very confident. You're going to feel like you've got such amazing luck. Your finances are going to be on point. Um, so this is what January is going to feel like for you. So you're starting off really strong here, Leo, really strong. Moving on to the month of February, we have the death card. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And bam, just like that, we move right into transformation. So the death card really speaks about that. It speaks about transformation. So what I really want to point out here is that what I'm currently hearing is that um, I feel that for a lot of you um, in, the, in the collective where Maybe you've sort of always experienced this luck or this luxury and you're wanting something different, right? You're wanting to um, sort of go somewhere else and experience a different way of living or a different way of being. Um, death is really about something needing to come to an end so that something new can take its place. It's sort of like the death and the rebirth. And ultimately, that's really transformation. So I feel that in the month of February, I feel that, um, Leo, you're going to be experiencing some sort of change here. You're going to be experiencing a rebirth of some sort. Um, and this is good. Like, recognize that um, a rebirth means that it's basically you're starting over, right? You're being given an opportunity to um, change something that ultimately you felt you couldn't change. Um, and that's what I like to see. So moving on to the month of March, we have the Four of Swords. Okay, this is about taking a rest, allowing yourself to reflect on your past experiences. Um, also putting a setting aside time to sort of meditate, allow your, to clear your mind. I really, what I'm hearing is clear your mind, clear your mind. Um, the Four of Swords is really that, you know, Swords really speaks about um, our thoughts, our mental thoughts, and it also talks about um, how we communicate. And I really feel that if you're, how you communicate with yourself um, is very important here. So it's really going to be important for you in the month of March to set aside, you know, t quiet time, like set aside time to sort of unwind, allow your mind to sort of be free. Um, meditation is really about clearing your mind. It's clearing out your thoughts um, and sort of allowing silence to come in to sort of get a breather. Just like we need rest whenever we overly exert ourselves, our mind needs the same amount of rest. Um, we constantly think so many things all day long. 
And so setting aside even 10 minutes a day is going to be so helpful for you here because I feel that it's going to bring you a lot of clarity once you do that. I feel that if you sort of feel like you've been, like you've got a lot of brain fog going on and there's just so much going on up here, then I feel that by setting aside 10 minutes every day here, Leo, for you to just clear your mind, clear your thoughts, um, you'll get a lot of clarity that you need. I really feel this is also for some of you, Leos, you like to be busy, okay? You like to be in the spotlight, you like to be in the limelight, and this is really, they're really wanting you to sort of take a step back, and they're wanting you to sort of rest, okay? When I say rest, I mean actual rest. This is not about you constantly doing a gig or constantly being, you know, the center of attention. This is about you taking a step back for once and really letting someone else, you know, have a little bit of fun um, and allow them to show to sort of showcase their abilities. The month of March is going to be a big rest period for you. And I really feel that with this rest period, it's really going to be, you're going to, you're going to experience things slowing down for you. You're going to experience like things aren't really working the way that they've always worked for you. This is important. Pay attention to the energy, right? The month of March is a slow period for you. So don't get disappointed when things don't, you know, work out the way that they normally do. Or if, you know, all of a sudden you don't have as many clients or you don't have as many customers or, you know, you don't have as many projects, whatever it might be, understand that the month of March is a slow period for you. It is a rest period. All right, April, we have temperance. Beautiful. So temperance is really about... um transitioning um, or transforming one thing into another. It's also about patience and it's also about seeking the guidance and the angelic help that we need. Um, I feel that the month of April is really going to be about you tuning into your own intuition and allowing yourself to see things clearly from that higher perspective. Um, I sort of want to say that it's about you taking the high road here. Okay. Um, I also feel that, you know, with temperance, it's really about the duality of things, understanding that, um, everything flows in life and <clears throat> recognize that we shouldn't just look at things through one perspective. It's important for us to recognize that, you know, um, Everything always has an opposite way of being. So um, I don't know why they want me to say that, but I just, I just, it's like they're, they're wanting that what they're showing me is like, recognize that the opposite of sadness is being joyful, right? Recognize that everything has an opposite. So whatever gets presented to you in the month of April, um, don't just look at it through that lens. Allow yourself to to see it from a different, from the, from the opposite lens, you know, sort of look at it from the opposite perspective, because it's wanting you to recognize that life isn't just one path, one way. There are multiple ways that you can get to your destination. Um, and it's important for us to sort of um, ease ourselves and be graceful with ourselves as we go through a transition period. I really feel that April is a transition period for you because it's it's almost like they're wanting you to recognize that, you know, once you go through this rebirth in the month of February and then all of a sudden you're hit with like this slow period, I feel that April is when you really start to see the with clarity how you are transitioning into a different phase, a different way of being, okay? Moving on to the month of May, we have the High Priestess. Okay, so now this is sort of, this is all starting to make sense now, Leo. Um, I feel that where you start off in January, you start off at this, bam, you're like this vibrant being, you're full of abundance, you're, you know exactly, you have everything that you could want and more, but you're still not quite fulfilled. There's still something else that you feel is missing. And in February, you go through this rebirth stage where 
all of a sudden things start, um, you know, whether friendships start, you know, you start noticing that certain friendships start to die out or, um, you know, it's almost like the things that things are coming to an end in February. And in March, you're sort of asked to um, sort of reflect, right? Clear your mind, clear your thoughts, um, really recognize that a slow period is really a time for you to recover and to heal, okay? And then in April, it's where you're transitioning, you're, you're seeing things clearly, you're asking for the guidance and the clarity, and you're wanting your intuition to guide you and sort of light the spot on where you're transitioning to, right? And in May, you have the high priestess. And I feel that what you're transitioning into is a new way of being into the unknown, right? You're having to fully and completely and utterly trust that spirit has your back here with the high priestess. The high priestess is also about learning to trust our own tuition and to have faith in our own intuition. And I feel for you, Leo, here, this is really about you coming through this massive awakening and realizing that you are far more than you believed yourself to be. And I feel that in the month of May with this high priestess, it's really about um, understanding the that even though you even though you can control like you have the ability to manipulate energy in the physical in the non-physical it's really about you learning to manipulate it from a higher more objective perspective um, the high priestess is about having blind faith okay and a lot of times when we get pushed into a path of, of the unknown, we get very terrified because we have no idea what we're about to face. We have no idea what obstacles or challenges we, we are going to have to overcome. And what's important for us is to recognize that um, we have to be able to, to trust our own instincts in this case, right? I also want to point out that energetically for the entire planet, um, the veil between the non-physical and the physical is so thin. It's getting to the point that it will eventually become non-existent. So when I say that there are a lot of people within the collective that are massively awakening, they're, they're, they're realizing that we live in a world that is not what we thought it was. They're starting to come to this realization. And so the high priestess is really about learning to see beyond the physical, okay? Then we move on to the month of June for you, Leo, and we have the Eight of Cups, beautiful. So this is about you really recognizing that, um, this is about you recognizing that you're, there are certain things in your life that you are no longer being fulfilled by, whether it's relationships, whether it's a job. I feel that once you come into that realization that things aren't what they seem and that you have to be willing to see beyond what you see in the physical, you start getting disappointed, right? You, you get disappointed and you recognize, God, this isn't what I thought it was. And, and I'm not, you know, it's not giving me the same amount of joy. It's not giving me the same amount of pleasure as it once did, you know, when I was blind to what was actually real, okay? And the Eight of Cups is about you walking away towards um, something better, something that you that that will be more fulfilling for you and that you know is going to give you that joy and that stimulation that you've been seeking, right? So that's what I feel the month of June is going to be for you. It's about coming into union with both your masculine and your feminine energy and recognizing that, you know what, I don't need these things outside of me to fulfill me. I can fulfill myself with, with just with who I am. Okay. Now moving on to the month of July, we have the seven of swords. Okay. So what I'm going to say here is that I want you to pay very close attention to, um, people in your surroundings, people in your life here in the month of July that are going to try to cheat you, that are going to try to steal from you, that are going to lie to you, going to try to manipulate you. There's two things, right? 
it's important for you to recognize that you see things clearly for what they are. Recognize that again, and I don't know why I keep saying this, Leo, but it's like, it's almost like you've been wearing rose colored glasses this whole time. And it's like you, you haven't really been aware and you haven't really been paying very close attention to what's really going on in this world or what's going on in your world. I'm just going to say that. And I feel like you just sort of live in this la la land that that has just made you become very unaware, right? And I feel that what's happening for you in 2022 is you are coming to a very huge awakening process where you're starting to see things so clearly. And it's almost like those rose colored glasses are completely off now. And now you're like, whoa, I'm being so bombarded with the truth, the reality, and now I'm having to make super conscious choices and decisions, right? For the month of July, it's really about recognizing, it's about trying to, to be sneaky, right? Like recognize, like are, recognize the individuals that try to be sneaky around you. Are they trying to steal your energy, right? What are they trying to take from you? Are they manipulating you? Are they trying to get away with something? Really pay very close attention to that. It's also going to be important for you to recognize how you are stealing from yourself, how you are manipulating yourself, how you are lying to yourself. This is about truth. Swords represent the truth and it represents clarity. So I feel that the month of July is going to be like a whole bunch of truths are going to be revealed to you and you're going to have your you're trying, you're going to, you're going to see things so clearly. And, um, it might be a little jarring for you at first, but I really feel that ultimately it's going to lead you by recognizing this and seeing this for what it really is here, Leo, it's going to give you, it's going to feel so much better to just know, to ultimately know the truth. Okay. Now moving on to the month of August, we look beautiful. I feel, okay. So you have the six of swords. So I love it because in July, it's like you're starting to see all the lies. You're starting to see all of the deceit. You're starting to see all the manipulation. You're starting to see it all. And then automatically in August, you're like, okay, that's it. I'm done, right? The Six of Swords is about moving towards calmer shores. I feel that August is really about, you know, your spirits and your guides and your angels really, you know, leading you towards your destined path, leading you towards that fulfillment that you've been seeking. That's really what, what the Six of Swords represents. It represents um, moving towards something that is destined for you, that is better for you, that isn't as, you know, manipulative or secretive or destructive, okay? Moving on to the month of September here, Leo, we have the Eight of Pentacles. Beautiful. Okay. So once you you move on and you recognize I'm done, it's over, I want something new, you then start putting in the work. You start becoming the master of your own destiny. You start um, really concentrating on the things that bring you the most joy. The Eight of Pentacles is really about about working, doing the things that you love to do. And I think you just needed that clarity. You needed to sort of recognize, you know, that you have this belief or this perception that maybe the things you were doing were actually fulfilling you and they were actually joyful for you. But then you realized those rose colored glasses came off and you're like, this isn't as joyful. And I don't love this as much as I thought I did. It's just, it's more of a hassle. It's more of a headache for me, right? So then you start really focusing in on becoming the master of self, right? I look at the eight of pentacles as the master of self. You start really discovering who you really are and how you really function and what really works for you and what you really love and what you find very joyful. And you totally and completely immerse yourself in that. So I really feel that the month of September for you is really about you working on you. And I love to see this. Moving on to the month of October here, um, Leo, we have the Queen of Swords. Beautiful. So the Queen of Swords is a very intuitive woman who ultimately um, stands, sits in her truth. She sits in her power and she sits in her truth. And she makes very decisive uh, 
she makes very decisive, she takes very decisive action, okay? What I love about the Queen of Swords is that she sits on her throne and she has the sword in one hand and she's open. And as she's facing the crowd, like, so anything that gets presented to you, you're like, I'm open to receiving it because her palm is open to receive anything that's presented to her. But the sword represents her truth and her clarity, which means that she will no longer allow anything outside of her truth to manipulate her or to sway her or to um, try to change her or conform her. And I really feel that's you moving into your solid truth of who you are, Leo. Excuse me for just a second. So I feel that in the month of October, you literally sit on your throne of truth and you understand without a shadow of a doubt who you are. You allow yourself to be open to newer opportunities, newer ways of, of being and of growing. But you, you stand solid in your truth, recognizing that um, you're not going to allow your emotions to get in the way and make choices for you. So you're making choices based off of your intelligence and your intuition. Okay, so that is what October is going to represent for you. Moving on to the month of November here, Leo, we have the Hierophant. Beautiful. Can I just say, Leo, this is the most amazing and the most beautiful layout for a year that I have ever seen. Literally. Like, I am, I love this. I love seeing the transition and the way that the energy flows for you. The Hierophant is about, um, understanding spiritual truths, um, higher learning, um, looking at our beliefs, looking at our traditions. It's it's really about questioning and, and learning to come into an understanding of things that we ultimately never really question, right? I feel for some of you, some of you might be, you know, getting married, um, you know, the the Hierophant really speaks about religious practices. It speaks about um, religious beliefs. Um, and it also speaks about generational traditions. And I feel a lot of times when the Hierophant comes, comes up, what it really represents is us discovering and understanding our own spiritual truths, right? Recognizing that the way maybe our families might have raised us doesn't really resonate with us anymore. And we have to sit down and evaluate what feels true to us. Um, and that's when we learn what our spiritual truth really is. We obtain the keys to our own wisdom and to the wisdom of all by standing and understanding our spiritual truths. Moving on to the month of December here, we have judgment. Yes. Yes. So judgment, this is you answering to a higher calling. This is you being in alignment with your divine essence. It's you being true to who you are and, and allowing yourself to experience who you are in your essence, in that infinite wisdom that is connected to divine source and all. Leo, I am I am like so in love with your yearly spread here for 2022. And I absolutely love this for you. Um, this is going to be a very exciting year for you. And I feel that you're going to learn so much about yourself and who you are and what you're capable of achieving um, and being. I feel you're going to see yourself in a very different light. Um, and I feel that, you know, where you start out, you start off in a place that's so abundant and so prosperous, and then you beautifully blossom, you, you scrape down to the bare minimum and you completely blossom into this divine presence, um, that has it all. And I'm, I'm, I just absolutely love this. Um, let's go ahead and draw from the wisdom of the Oracle to see what additional information spirit has for you. Angels, archangels, guides, ascended masters, what information and what insight can you offer Leo this upcoming year? Ooh, okay, let's see. 
Yep. <laughs> I literally just saw it. Okay. All right. So here we go. We have number 45, Time to Go. Okay. I, I, I love seeing the synchronicities. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> time to Go is really about you walking out of one form of your life and moving towards your destined path. It's taking that new route, right? And we see that here, where you go through this rebirth in the month of February. It's time for you to, to end one phase of your life and transition into this and be reborn into this new phase of existence of who you are. Um, I feel that this this completely portrays um, sort of a massive awakening and for some, a dark night of the soul experience. And um, it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, for those of you wondering, does it really take a year um, to go through a dark night of the soul process? Sometimes it takes longer than that. Um, mine was about a year and a half. Um, it, sometimes it does. It just depends on the person. So um, thank you so much, Leo. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you were uh, able to gain a lot of information and insight for your upcoming year. And I look forward to seeing you in the new year with all of your messages. Namaste, guys.